It's dangerous being a rapper. Uh, a recent study found that a recent study into the average age at which musicians die found that if you're a jazz musician, you'll live to a very happy 67. But if you're in rap, you will die on average when you're 27. Now, before anyone makes any rash decisions different music genre, don't worry. Uh, this is only because of a mathematical gimmick. What happened in this study is they only looked at people who had already died. And jazz has been around for quite a while, so people had time to grow old. Rap is so young that all the people who will actually die of old age are still very much alive. So this difference will go away. The 27 will go a lot higher. There's no real danger here, except in being misled by the numbers. And that's what I want to talk about today. Because numbers can be very misleading. And now that we get a lot of our information from numbers in statistics, and that we use numbers to make decisions for us through computers, it's becoming more and more important to be aware of all the places where it can go wrong. Now, the music example probably won't fool you for very long because the difference is so ridiculously large. Uh, but there are plenty of cases where it does fool you. Uh, for example, I was quite shocked when about a year ago, the US government released some information on the average income over the last 40 years. According to them, we haven't gotten any richer. You might think so, but no, actually, we only earn about a few percent more now than we did in 1980. Now, I wouldn't have been able to spot the mistake here very quickly. But thankfully, there was a think tank also in the US that took a closer look. And they saw that the government had made lots of slightly weird reasoning mistakes. They would divide the total income by the average size of a family, but they wouldn't use the size of a family now. They would divide all of the different incomes over the size of a family in 1980, which of course was a lot bigger. So it's as if you have an extra kid you have to pay for. And obviously, if you have to pay for their food and their clothing, you're not going to have any more money left over for vacations or travel. So the average income should be higher than what the government found. And actually, if you correct for all of these mistakes, we now earn, on average, 51% more than we did 40 years ago. So things have actually improved a lot. But you only see this if you do the calculations correctly. Uh, and I think what that shows very nicely is that you have to be careful with how much a number means. Because if you do it wrong, it can mean nothing. But even if you do it correctly, you can get some very weird results out of mathematics. And the nicest example I know of uh, a number which was calculated perfectly fine, but is utterly senseless, has to do with Nicolas Cage and swimming pools. Now look at the two graphs here behind me, you'll see in black the number of movies that Nicolas Cage made in a year, and in red the number of people who drowned by falling into swimming pools. Uh, and mathematically, you see there's a shocking amount of overlap. They're about 66.6% similar. So clearly, we can only conclude that Nicolas Cage is getting his inspiration from people that drown. And we should definitely make him stop producing movies. Um, of course, we know better. The uh, thing is, the mathematics doesn't. And again, this is a case which won't fool us. It's an utterly meaningless number. Uh, but there are cases where these kinds of meaningless numbers do fool people uh, and sometimes lead to very weird consequences, especially when you put them into computers. Now, Amazon found this out the hard way about uh, a, a couple years ago when they tried to automate their hiring decisions. So they wanted to make a recruitment system, which was a piece of artificial intelligence that would do all of their hiring for them. You would just give it a bunch of resumes, and it would tell you which were the best candidates. OK, so until they turned on this computer, uh, and it blatantly refused to hire women. It got so bad that the computer downgraded a CV simply because it contained the word woman. So obviously, they didn't want to use this. Uh, Amazon thankfully spotted the mistake before it was put into use. Uh, and they tried to fix it, but they couldn't. So they had to abandon the entire automation process. And that's because there was one of these overlaps. 
Amazon didn't actually, before they used this computer, hire just as many men as women. And the maths picked up on this. And so, oh, there's this link between whether you're a man and whether you're getting hired. So clearly we should use that. And it enlarged these kinds of biases. And it got so bad that the maths, because it didn't know what it was talking about, simply picked it up and kept going no matter what we did. So we should be careful not just with how we interpret these numbers, but also with what we put into our computers and how we trust those systems. In the case of Amazon, it's a bias that we already have that Amazon was using and that got bigger. But it can also be a bias that appears out of nowhere. Because just as mathematics is really bad at removing these biases, it's also really bad at generalizing. We teach it uh, certain rules for how to behave, uh, but if it gets into a new situation, it doesn't really know what to do. So one example of this is the kind of system that a self-driving car uses. Tesla, of course, course have to know, know what's coming, coming towards, towards them on the road, road. if it's a car or a or shopping, shopping bag, bag, and you have to make decisions, decisions accordingly. accordingly. And, and that, that works, works fairly well. well. They're, They're quite, quite safe. safe. As, as long as what happens, happens is like a normal road situation. situation. If you take if you a different, different one, one, the computer, the computer will just go completely off the rails. The rails. So, so here are a few pictures for you. On the left, you'll see the normal case with a school bus and a scooter and a fire truck. And on the right are a few slightly anomalous positions. And as you can see, if you do a wheelie with your scooter, the computer will be convinced it's a parachute. If your scooter is upside down, it will be a bobsled. If you have a fire truck which, is landing on, which landed on its roof, it's a boat. These computer systems just have no idea what to say in these cases. They'll pretend like they're very, very certain. So that's the numbers you see here. They're about 100% certain that it's a parachute. But they just have no clue. They never saw a scooter lying on its side. So they do something weird, something random. And this can lead to accidents. So these are serious issues. It can also lead to people being misidentified because you have the same problem with facial recognition software. Now, as you know, facial recognition software works pretty well. You can use it to unlock your phone and everything. Um, but only, again, in cases that the computer is familiar with. So if you see a face and you put some weirdly colored glasses on it, the computer will be completely lost, just as with uh, the self-driving car mechanism. So here are a few more examples. Uh, in the top row, you see a picture, I think, of Reese Witherspoon. If you Photoshop blue glasses on her, the computer will be absolutely convinced that the person it's looking at is Russell Crowe on the right. <laughs> and the same thing here with these researchers who, who made these uh, glasses from cardboard, I think. Uh, they put them on, and the computer identified them with the people you see below them. So these kinds of computer systems are quite fragile. They're not very good at generalizing. And, of course, that doesn't mean we should stop using these systems. We shouldn't stop using mathematics. We can't really stop using mathematics because the world has gotten too complex to not simplify it with numbers and with formulas. But I do think that we can stop blindly trusting any number that comes out of a formula or out of an algorithm. As you saw, it goes wrong quite a lot. There are serious consequences to this. And so, and so I, I hope, hope that, that uh, what, what you can, can see, see now is that, that actually, actually understanding, understanding a bit of mathematics helps, helps because, because you'll be able, able to spot these mistakes, mistakes more easily. And it's, and it's gotten, gotten really important. important. If, if you, you have, have this, this new lens, lens of looking at numbers, at numbers with, with some, some criticism, criticism you'll, you'll be able, able to take a more critical stance to the world and everyone benefits from that. Thank you.